In this episode, number 33, of Rambles with Robin and Ruby, we head south from Eagle Plains to Dawson City, Yukon. Midway, we spend the night on the side of the Dempster Highway, at the south end of Windy Pass in the Ogilvy Mountains. The weather was perfect, and there was lots to see along the way, including the ecozone changes from alpine tundra through taiga into boreal forest. The highlight was seeing a doll's sheep in the Windy Pass area. Join us as we complete our travel along the Dempster Highway in northern Yukon. South of Eagle Plains, we re-enter the Boreal Forest, partly because we are headed south and partly because the elevation of this area in central Yukon is low. In Europe, the Boreal Forest is called Taiga. The Boreal Forest is the largest forested habitat in the world, making up about one-third of the Earth's total forested area. You see many old forest fire burns in the boreal forests of Yukon. But don't worry, the boreal forest is adapted to fire. Fires help remove the thick forest floor mat of old forests so that new young forests can begin. Fire also generally kills some tree species, like the black spruce. Although the black spruce burns easily, it is adapted to fire. For example, their tight cluster of seed cones releases their seeds when heated by a forest fire. The next generation of black spruce seedlings are usually established within five to ten years after the fire. Deciduous trees, such as birch or aspen, come back quickly after the fire. South of Eagle Plains, there is a dramatic change in the landscape. The Dempster Highway reaches an elevation of about 850 meters, or 2,800 feet, and winds around flat and broad ridges. This landscape is caused by the local geology, which consists of softer siltstone and harder sandstone, both of which were created by the erosion of ancient mountains about 140 million years ago. The area looks like tundra, the underlying permafrost, and the harsh winter winds discourage the growth of trees. We paused for a rest at the Ogilvy Ridge rest area. To the east across the valley lie the light-colored rocks of the northern Ogilvy Mountains. Although the weather on this southbound trip was spectacular, the area was covered in thick fog during our northern trip. For a reminder of how quickly weather can change in central and northern Yukon, check out our previous video, 2019 episode 19, when we traveled from Elephant Rock to the Eagle Plains Campground. The round, grey-coloured rocks of the Ogilvy Mountains are really interesting for two reasons. First, the style of weathering and erosion tells geologists that these mountains were not covered by ice sheets during the last ice age. Secondly, dolostone and limestone rock are chemically difficult places for plants to grow. For that reason, the Ogilvy Mountains support specialized plants that thrive or tolerate the challenging geological soils. Mm -hmm. 
One of the distinctive signs that the Ogilvy Mountains were not covered by an ice sheet during the last ice age is the presence of rock spires or towers on the mountains. These spires are called tors. Some look like castles, and one actually looks like an elephant. That one tor is called Elephant Rock. If a glacial ice sheet had covered the area, those fragile tors would have been ground away. So the geology can tell us a lot about the past history of this area. You might notice that the creek in this area is yellow-brown in color, and the rocks on the creek bed are stained red-orange in color. Groundwater circulated through the local rocks buried in the area and dissolved minerals, including iron, from those rocks. The dissolved iron is carried to the land surface by the groundwater. When the mineralized iron-rich groundwater mixes with oxygen in our atmosphere on the land surface, the iron dissolved in the groundwater falls out of the water as iron minerals, which are yellow, red, and orange in color. Those iron minerals stain the rocks and color the creek water. This is another illustration of how geologists read the story written on the land and how geology tells us about the processes that are taking place beneath our feet. Just before entering Windy Pass in the Ogilvy Mountains, we came across one doll sheep which was licking salt off the road. Now many animals are attracted to road salt because they crave the minerals contained in the salt. But normally in the summer, the sheep inhabit the subarctic mountain ranges, open ridges, meadows, and steep slopes in the Yukon. In the fall, those sheep move to their winter range where the wind keeps the snow shallow and the sun warms south-facing slopes. This rugged alpine habitat helps to protect the sheep from predators like wolves, bears, wolverines, and golden eagles. At the end of June 22nd, we elected to camp along the side of the Dempster Highway at the south end of Windy Pass. In this area, the Ogilvy Mountains present a wonderful view, and there was virtually no traffic, so it was a pleasant place to camp, except for the mosquitoes. Fortunately, it was windy, hence the name Windy Pass, and the wind kept the mosquitoes away. It was also a great place to photograph the local wildflowers, many of which are specific to limestone and dolomite substrates of the Ogilvy Mountains. This part of the Dempster Highway crosses the flat Blackstone Uplands. The uplands drain into the East Blackstone River. The tundra is characterized by shallow soil, is underlain by permafrost, and enjoys a very short growing season. Therefore, only really tough plants survive on the tundra, 
including dwarf shrubs, some specialized herbaceous plants, mosses, and lichens. Recall that permafrost underlies this area. You might note some lumpy ground. In here, you can see ice. That ice is the exposed ice core of a falsa, a type of permafrost. It's reported that the ice core was exposed during the road construction, when the insulating ground vegetation was accidentally opened up. That triggered melting of the falsa ice core, which continues to this day. If you're interested in more detail about this geological feature, check out our previous video, 2019, episode 18. Tombstone Mountain is the iconic image of Tombstone Territorial Park in Yukon. Fortunately, it's easy to view the mountain from a lookout along the Dempster Highway, saving you a multi-day, 20-kilometer hike across the tundra. Its ragged peak reflects its geology. The rock type that makes up Tombstone Mountain is called cyanite. As the cyanite cooled below the surface of the earth, vertical fractures formed. The long process of weathering and erosion ultimately exposed the cyanite rock on the surface, where more weathering enhanced the fractures to create cliffs and the pointy mountain. South of Tombstone Territorial Park, we re-enter the boreal forest. The boreal forest is a vast region that is circumpolar and rings the northern hemisphere, mostly north of the 50th parallel. Other countries with boreal forest include Russia, Alaska in the United States, Sweden, Finland, Norway, and small regions of Scotland in the UK. In Canada, the boreal forest covers almost 60% of the Canadian land area. In Yukon, the boreal forest is dominated by black and white spruce, lodgepole pine, with deciduous stands of trembling aspen, balsam poplar, and willows. You may have heard of the Klondike River. Its name is Trondike in the language of the local Han First Nation people. The Han language is a northern Athabascan language spoken by the Han Wichin people, whose name loosely translates to people who live along the river. The Klondike River is a tributary of the Yukon River in Canada, and the Great Klondike Gold Rush of 1896 to 1899 got its name from this river. During that gold rush, about 100,000 prospectors flooded into the Klondike region of Yukon. The Klondike River has its source in the Ogilvy Mountains and flows into the Yukon River at Dawson City. It's not unusual to see several vehicles stopped along the roadside. Usually, that's a sign of wildlife on the side of the road. In this case, there was a fleeting glimpse of a grizzly bear making its mad dash into the bush. Now, this is not an epic photo, but it does explain the unusual parking arrangement of recreational vehicles along the roadside. These unusual rock piles are the tailings or waste rock that were left behind by the large dredges that worked the Klondike River to extract placer gold between 1899 and 1966. That's right, these large dredges worked the river gravels right up to 1966. If you want to learn a little bit more about these dredges, why not take a look at our video episode 2019, episode 16, Minto to Dawson City. It's always exciting to arrive in Dawson City, Yukon. The famous Yukon River is on the left, hidden behind the berm. The old downtown buildings along the main street fill you with a sense of history and anticipation of walking around to explore the old town. I think these shops are as busy today as they were over a hundred years ago during the gold rush. Only instead of prospectors, today the visitors are tourists. 
If you want a flavor of what Dawson City looks like, take a look at our video, 2019 episode 16, Minto to Dawson City. Finally, we arrive again at the Gold Rush Campground in Dawson City. This is a popular campground. It's full most nights during the summer because the owners are friendly, it has the amenities people need, and it is located in downtown Dawson City, making it easy to get out and walk around to check out the town. So that ends the day. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and hit the bell to receive future updates. Leave a comment if you're inclined. Bye for now and stay safe. Thank you.